okay, what I think now is you ask me what I think wrestling is now. I think it's going through a transformation. I really do. It's evolving. If you don't evolve, you die. The dinosaurs are gone. I forget how many creatures a day disappear off this planet because they can't evolve, whether it's taken over by uh, urban growth, water, wind, sun, whatever. But certainly this cannot be the final product because if this is the final product, it is going to be like a, the dinosaurs and they will die. Because, and this is no knock to the talent at all, because the guys in my era said, oh, we sold out every night. I was there. They didn't sell out every night. And the arenas they sold out were much smaller, okay? And they were better workers. No, they weren't. There was only a handful of good workers in each generation. But all in all, the talent is better now. They're younger, they're faster, they're quicker, and they... Uh, respond better to cro the crowd, what the crowd wants. The only thing I see is they have forgot there's a story to be told because this is the question. Am I this old that I still read the paper? And the papers are going, going the way of the dinosaurs, right? They're all collapsing. Everything's instant gratification. I like to read. The books are going. So am I a dinosaur too? Will I go the other way? But what I'm getting at is the guys go and do spots just to get a pop. So there's no story. So I think someone has to step back and look and say, okay, if this is what we're going to do, we're going to forget all psychology. So if that happens and everybody goes for the instant pop, the guy that goes out and does the less and tells the story he's going to get over because he's going to stand out as the gingerbread boy that jumped up off the sheet and ran away, right? He's different. So I think that ultimate fight is killed boxing and it's really hurt wrestling. So I see somewhere in the near future a hybrided sport of where it goes back to well, wrestlers are bullshit, but this guy's real. Like when I was a kid, I knew wrestling. This is what, 55, 56, I knew wrestling was bullshit, but I thought the Sheik was real. <laughs> so I bought a ticket because I thought that one guy was real, and I, I knew the championship matches had to be real, you know what I mean? The guy wrestles for the championship one month and loses, and then he, but that's real, and the next week, month he wins, but that's fake. So you... Your mind will let you believe anything it wants to, but I think it has to go back that there's a little bit of doubt. And I also think that all this backstage stuff was fabulous when it first started. But it's gone way past the point. Ultimate fight. Do they go backstage? No. Do they cut a lot of promos? What is it? Non-stop action. It's non-stop action and all they show is the trainings building up to the matches. Right. Like a little promo package before the match starts. Right. And But when they get in there, it's not, well, let's go backstage and see how this was set up. It's And that, I think, needs to be done. And I think it will be done. And I think there will be a hybrid. And the other thing is the WWE. Well, they're wrong. Rome fell. Every empire has fallen. I mean, when I was a kid and wrestled in territories, I never thought they'd go away. They're gone. And Vince is going to have to pass that business off to somebody sometime. And it's not that they're not going to do as good a job as Vince. It's going to be the same product, but not with his stamp on it. So it will be weaker unless they bring someone in from the outside with a completely different view and change it around. And he's been riding high for a long time and will continue to ride high, I believe, in this era. But when this thing comes full cycle again, 
and I'm not saying that everybody's going to believe wrestling, but they'll believe in one or two guys that you could actually cross guys over the ultimate fight, whether it's a work or shoot, people won't know, and bring them back to the wrestling show, and they'll say, well, he's real because he was in the ultimate fight. Well, I'm not so sure they're all real either, you know what I mean? So I, I think uh, uh, Al Snow said it best when people say wrestling's fake, and they, he'll go up to a fan and be like, y you know wrestling's fake, right? And the fan will be like, yeah, but it's just like, you, you saw that person get injured. He's like, yeah, I saw him get injured. And it's just like, it looked really bad, but it's just like, you know wrestling's fake, but when you see somebody get injured, you still want to make people believe it or anything, where it's either a work or not. Yeah. The fans still believe into it. Yeah, I always, my theory is that you're 11 years old, it's Christmas Eve, now you know there's really no Santa, but you really want to believe this Santa. You know mom and dad have got the presents and put them in the closet, but you won't open the closet because you want one more you, Christmas Eve, where you believe the Santa Claus, and that's what wrestling fans are. And I'm a wrestling fan, so we want to believe in somebody. And I'll give you a great example of it. Goldberg. When I created Goldberg, he never talked. They used to knock on the door like he was an animal. A police escort to the ring. But for four hours before the show, all they did was sell out buildings and chant Goldberg, 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 because he was different. He didn't speak, he had short boots, black tights, you know, he didn't have anything fancy, but he kicked ass. And that's what it's about. People want, he was the Mike Tyson, when Mike Tyson was a badass. Now, do you think the WWE or uh, TNA has a product or a person that you think can be the next step, where you still think there's still that one person that has to come. Kurt Angle. Kurt Olympic Angle. Cha Olympic champion. I mean, he's a real deal, brother. I mean, someone says, you know. He's an insane man. You know, when, when, when it comes to wrestling, he's <laughs> yeah. pretty insane. Yeah, and he could cross over, too. I mean, he could cross over, and I mean, maybe he would not be the top guys. And, and I'm not saying this disparately because I don't know all of Kurt's ability, I know he's the, one of the greatest from amateur wrestlers, but you wouldn't book him against the top guy until you had it figured out what you were going to do. But, I mean, he could beat anybody underneath, and you could come across to a wrestling show and everybody would say, well, Kurt Angle's real match is real, nobody else's. And it would cause quite a stir, but the way you would do it, I think, is forget that Kurt ever wrestled for whatever company he had wrestled, and 30 weeks later down the line, you say, well, Kurtz won his last 60 matches in a row. He's undefeated in 60 matches. He keep on doing that and killing that, and when he gets to 146, he just tied Goldberg's streak. And then I don't have to be a genius to figure out the 147th opponent. That's true. Yeah, that's pretty smart. <laughs> Sometimes things are so clear, you can't see them, you know what I mean? And this guy, Goldberg, wants to come back, so... I think yeah, that's, yeah. that's a perfect way to bring somebody like that back into wrestling. Yeah. No, like, um, you've been around through everything, through the territories, you, you've been to... So say Lincoln lost his last match, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you, you did, when you were the young chipper coming to wrestling, you yeah. started off in WWE, then you broke your back, then you went down to Florida, uh, uh, and you told me the stories of the year-long process of turning into the Taskmaster or like the Satanic, Ta yes. Kevin Sullivan, and like then you went to WCW, did the, like <clears throat> the gimmick there uh, and everything, and you started booking. Now, how is it to book a big company like that, like a multi-million dollar company? Is it like... Uh, well, it got harder and harder as... The company got more successful because then the contracts had X amount of number of days a guy could work. Were you going to burn them up on TV, which had to drive your house shows and your pay per views? Because if you use them for the month, you just lost four dates and he's only working 86 times for the year. So now you're doing a little dance here because on one side, you need to get ratings, but on the other side, the accountants are telling you, you better not go over because it's going to cost us 
$40,000 a match or $50,000 a match or $60,000 a match. So it got to be very complicated in keeping people. And then the other thing is, people don't understand this. When you are directing a show and you bring two guys in the dressing room for a finish, one of them is going to leave unhappy. And I used to, I tried to break the thing by saying job. I started to say, have two guys sit down, and I would say, I'd like you to do Leo a favor. <laughs> so it puts the guy that's doing the job in an awkward position to say no. So, and it, even though this is a work, it's competitive because if you get stigmatized as losing too much, the company doesn't think you're valuable enough, even though you're probably more valuable than the guy going over. But the corporate side doesn't understand that. They actually believe the guys are going over after a while, do you know what I mean? So you have to uh, be very careful how you use somebody and the horrible thing is sometimes you use your best talent to get somebody that's not as talented as over. So you need to make sure that when you come in and ask for a favor for Leo, that Bobby next week is going to be taken care of. Yeah. So you can say to him, you know, if you do this favor for Leo tonight, next week I'll get you booked against Mary Jane and you're going to beat Mary Jane Bobby. So. Yeah. Appreciate it, you know, and it will come back around with this match sometimes. And the thing is, if you're truthful enough, which is a very rare thing in this business, if you're truthful enough and you gain the respect that you're not bullshitting them, after a while, that resistance to doing the job will break down. And the guys will start to see that, well, I'm going to do the job this week, but next month I'm back on top.